We're going to talk a little bit about I Am Zombie. So, Mark, I guess it's a game about zombies, but just far out there, the idea. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's a game about zombies, but it's, it's you're the zombie. Uh, and so the same sort of big step we took on Vampire, which now doesn't seem like a big step, because everyone is doing stuff about zombies now. Uh, the zombie is the pro- protagonist. Uh, but back in the day when Vapor came out, it was a big step, and people forget that. And anyway, I'm doing I'm doing the same thing with with zombies now. Is that you know you are the zombie, you, you are the monster. How do you turn a zombie into an interesting character to play? Because usually they're just portrayed portrayed as dumb flesh walking around and trying to eat your brains? Uh, basically the same bag of tricks I used in Vampire. Uh, I mean, you know, uh, you, know you, you create an interesting society, uh, you, you give them interesting powers, and, and you, you, you put them in a context of a world that hates them. Where, where, where they must, you know, struggle to survive. And, and zombies, unlike vampires, are, are struggling and crawling. They're the lowest of the low. And, it's, you know, and some of them, of course, are a more elite and older status. Uh, but, but, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a very difficult struggle, a blue-class struggle in a way. And, and, and so um, you, you just capture all these different strains and powers. And, well, you know, anyone watching this and knows uh, any of my work... Vampire World of Darkness knows, you know, how I create a structure where there's all the different power factions interacting and, and it's a layered thing and, 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 and that's how it works. Tell me a little bit about the background world for I Am Zombie. What role do the zombies have in the world? Uh, well, the same way as uh, uh, World of Darkness sort of based on uh, the idea that uh, belief creates reality. And so what people believe in is reality. And, and Mage kind of talked about the philosophy behind the whole world of darkness. Uh, uh, in this world, uh, this is a world about science, and it's about the Fermi paradox, and the idea of if there are aliens in the, in the universe, where are they? <laughs> yeah. And what's the answer to that? The answer is, is that they're there, and they're fucking with us. And so uh, I Am Zombie is just the first of the whole series of games that continues with Xenofactor, where you play the agent of the aliens. Mm-hmm. And in fact, it's their... Uh, their uh, their Vox, the, the little thing that sits in their nanotech helper that mutated to become the, the zombie virus. And, and so it all wraps together and it's a whole sort of uh, uh, series of games that sort of is set, it's a science fiction sort of, uh, you know, and science fiction is my first love, but it's still very mythic, obviously. I'm a Joseph Campbell junkie <laughs> and, and uh, I need myth, I need storytelling and, and, and this, this has it. Okay, so there is already a lot of background, and you're planning ahead. What's coming next? I've actually planned ahead 21 years. Now, everyone looks at me like I'm insane, but what happened when the 20th anniversary of Vampire came about, I, I looked at myself, and I was like, Mark, you should have planned ahead 20 years. <laughs> They're still playing, and, and it would have been a great, would have been great at the 20th year anniversary. There's a big moment where everyone had been waiting 20 years to find out what happened in Vampire. Like a, a mystery that I had set, and I had a puzzle, a code, a secret code in the original book. And on year 20, I unwrapped the secret of it. Well, this book has a secret code on every page that people can figure out. But by the last page, I had friends at NSA help me uh, work on it. And they'll probably not get it. But on year 20, we're going to reveal it, and it's going to demonstrate that I had and the whole idea in mind for the whole 20 years ahead of time. I planned out a 21-year, not, not meta plot, but unfolding of the truth of, of what really is, who the aliens are, why they're here, who, are the, 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 for who was the first zombie, and what, what, what was, you know, what, what's really going on beneath all the bullshit. Does anyone even have the chance to, to break that code, to find all that thing without, you know, a supercomputer <laughs> working in the background? Well, well, the way it works is that uh, every page, it gets harder. Okay. So I made it to the first 30 pages. You should be able to figure it out. The first page, and my, my kids can figure it out, okay? But not, I've had people who are not mathematically inclined. You know, I, I love math. I love secret codes. I love puzzles. And so for me, this is, you know, my greatest joy of, was creating this puzzle. But some of it's just Morris code. I mean, how hard is it to decode Morris code? But... I yeah. mean, if people on the internet get together, is what I figured, is that they'll just get together online and they'll figure it out, okay. right? You know? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm looking forward to the message boards. And... <laughs> yes, yes, so am I. I I'm, I'm, but, you know, the whole idea is that just with a 21-year story and 21 games that build on each other, is that I can do all this huge variety of, of different games that all interact together. And because it's a card-based system, you create a character using cards. You literally can create a character in five minutes. The idea is you just pick five cards. 
Okay. And, and, and you don't even need to know, know the rules. I just give people the cards and I say, just based on the picture and the name of the card, you know, whether it's, you know, uh, uh, um, you know, bicycle messenger or mafia or, or, or outdoorsman or, 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 or a cop, you know, just pick the cards that like and there's the combination of five cards, that's your character. And so you start the game not knowing the rules or the world. And you okay. start playing as a human caught up in an outbreak, which is immediately contained by the yeah. government, but you don't realize that you think it's a giant outbreak. They think it's like a movie, but in fact it's, a, it's, a, it's an outbreak and they, they come in, they quarantine it, and they slowly close in over a couple of days. But meanwhile, you're playing out a zombie movie, and then by the end of it, you're infected and you become an intelligent zombie, you become a toxic. Okay, so that's even a step forward from, from you know, storytelling driven game, a game that always tells a story when you start out playing. Yeah, no, the idea also is that uh, at some point the characters will discover this book. <laughs> this, this book is actually an in-game artifact. This, game, this book was written by zombies for zombies. Okay. So, so at some point the characters will, will find this book and then, then they can start reading it and discover for themselves as a player and a character at the same time. Okay. what this world is about. There's no rules in this book. This is, this is a book designed for all those people who over the years looked at my cool ass vampire books or mage books or werewolf and go, wow, that's so beautiful, but what are those numbers? Oh my God. Well, I took all the numbers out. So now you can show your friends this book. They can take it home and they can not get freaked out by it. And okay. by the way, it's the Purgatory Press page. This is the writers of the book. This is, we have alter egos in the game. This is the 1960s version of the book when it first came out. And this is sort of the Purgatory Press, the publishers of this book. Okay, this was a lot of fun to make, right? Uh, it was a lot of work, but yeah, I, I enjoyed every second. Okay. It was, it was a work of love. And uh, we had an amazing artist, he, Mark Kelly, not only did every piece of art in this book, but he laid out the entire thing. One artist did the entire book, and he's a frickin' genius. This guy is gonna be huge. He's gonna be a huge name in the business, honestly. Look at this book, it's incredible. I definitely will. He's, is he going to be working on the other books too? Oh yeah. <laughs> you're, you're not letting him go. I, I, I will. I will. I will raise his children for him if that's what it takes. <laughs> I will do anything. He, he's amazing. Okay, you you probably will have to in the next 21 years. But I'm totally f looking forward to trying and figure out the code. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. And I hope we're going to talk about the next books then in a year, uh, in two years, in three I'll, years. I'll, I'll be back. I love Germany. So. Okay. The book is all fluff. So I guess this is going fluff. to be the crunch. That's, that's the real deal. Yeah, you're right, though. In a gamer sense, <laughs> okay, this is fluff. But uh, yeah, this is the box. And uh, every player can get these, or just one player. And in it, you have uh, uh, chips, which are basically, uh, you know, you have cha, and you have uh, uh, brains. But you can also use <laughs> it for storytelling. If you remember, story path cards are kind of like uh, mm -hmm. whimsy cards, story path cards. Here's the rules, just a 32-page book. Simple rules. Don't freak the kids out, right? Yeah. Uh, people, I want to get people to start role playing again. I want them to have fun. This is the character journal, and back is a pocket for you to keep your cards. And uh, you actually could write into this your character's name, all your different things, all your different uh, aspects, the rest of your crew, your friends, and there's also information here. You can keep track of your whole chronicle in this. Uh, here's the dice, you get the dice as well. It's kind of like, uh, works like King of Tokyo, mm -hmm. a little bit, like a style. Uh, um, uh, and then uh, here's the cards. So the cards are uh, two-sided. So uh, this is the warm side. And then when you get damaged, you flip to the cold side. And that means when all your cards are flipped over, then you yeah. are incapacitated. So the cards make everything just so simple. Rather than having this complex character sheet that people have to spend a lot of time doing, and honestly, we all know this, There are people who see that process of creating a character like, no, I don't want to play a stupid game, right? People don't want to do that. And some people really enjoy tweaking the character for two weeks before they start playing. Ah, but you can do that. You can actually start out as a, instead of a fifth level character with five cards, you can start the game out as an eighth level character and you can spend two weeks picking out the exact combination of eight cards to make a kick-ass killer character. Okay. And that comment, and there are, this is game, I, I'm not shying away from, you know, power game or anything like that. I, I personally, in board games, I like to win. Okay, I work very hard to win. That's my fun. I, okay, if I don't win, I don't care. 
But I, I, I like working the wars, trying to win and trying to be cool with rules. And in these cards, there's all kinds of ways to use them in different ways. There's a, a twist at the bottom that you can use uh, one per turn, and you can use that to help your dice succeed. So, so basically, all the stuff that's in a, a other game is contained in these cards, and it's a, and it, it's enough to really. I think keep people's attention who like the rules because I'm a rules guy. I, I like rules as well as the storytelling. I just don't want the rules to get in the way of the storytelling. When I'm thinking about rules, I want to do that while everyone else is sort of talking about their crap. But then I don't want to miss the story. So this is a kind of a, this is a game was made for me, you know. So I can role play, have storytelling, and still do some rules in the low downtime. You made a game for yourself. And uh, my question is, are we going to have it in Germany, in English, or are we going to get a German well, version? Ulysses, just at this convention, came up to me and said, Mark, we want to do it. Oh. So uh, it's not done. They can change their mind. Don't change your mind. Uh, <laughs> please don't change your mind. I like you guys. I really do. I like you guys so much. You're a great company. Anyway. Don't break his heart. Don't break my heart. Please, don't break my heart. I have children, little, little babies. They need to be fed. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to have a German version. We're going to have a German version, Ulysses. We love you. All right.